Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So this is my astrological take um, on the astrology for May 2022. So we're continuing with the eclipse season here uh, with another eclipse uh, in May at the midpoint of May. We've got a Mercury retrograde uh, and then a new moon at the end of the month. So let's start off with um, the 5th of May. Here we've got an annual conjunction of the Sun conjunct uh, Uranus. It's at 14 degrees though of um, Taurus, so we're reaching kind of the midpoint here of Taurus, go, of Uranus going through Taurus. Um, so this is kind of like a, um, a halfway checkpoint in some respects. And uh, as opposed to say other times when we've actually got Sun conjunct Uranus. So take a look to see if uh, you've got anything say around 14 degrees of Taurus or in the opposite sign 14 degrees of Scorpio. Um, there may be some significance that happens to you here with regards to uh, something as ethereal as a major connection with the universe where you feel that you're getting messages. Uh, it can also represent um, a wake up or a shake up as well, right? And when we look at the fact that, that we've got both the Sun and Uranus in the sign of uh, the Earth sign of Taurus, this can be something like an Earth event, right? So that could be typically an earthquake, a volcano, that sort of thing can also happen around this time. Now the next thing we have happening uh, that starts on the 10th of May, we are going to have a Mercury retrograde and it's happening in the sign that is ruled by Mercury, and that would be Gemini. So it starts its retrograde on the 10th of May at 4 Gemini, 50 minutes. It does go direct the next month on the 3rd of June, but it's going to be at 26 degrees of Taurus. And so this Mercury retrograde covers both these signs. Um, and what's interesting that I thought when I looked at the ephemeris and the chart for this Mercury retrograde on the 10th of May, this retrograde happens very close to the time when Jupiter is going to be ingressing into Aries out of um, Pisces. I thought that was interesting too. So it kind of is in many ways, um, this Jupiter going into Aries is kind of ushering in um, new types of things, um, getting on new paths and new things opening up for us. Um, but then this Mercury retrograde in its own sign starts the same time and it's like, well, wait a minute, maybe I've got to think a little bit about this. Um, and certainly for those folks that are potentially signing contracts to literally start a new way, a new job in life, uh, anything new in life, I would suggest that if you're starting it around the 10th of May, uh, say a contract, please uh, do look carefully at all the details uh, because, because Mercury is in its own sign, it kind of exerts not only more of an effect, but it also goes into that classically what we think Mercury retrograde is, like don't sign contracts, uh, back up all your computers, uh, be careful who you send messages to, it could go to the wrong person. Um, check all your messages. You could be missing messages. So it's those typical things that we're talking about here. But I'm sure other astrologers will be covering this too. Um, the other thing that we've got happening at this time of Mercury retrograde, uh, we also have Venus is going to be in, uh, in Aries too, at eight degrees of Aries. Um, also exerting kind of newness with regards to money, love, and our values, where we may really value ourselves a lot more. Um, we've got the Sun, we'll be sextiling um, this Mars that's still in uh, Pisces at this time. And so this says to me that this is kind of giving opportunities with regards to Mars is now in the spiritual sign of Pisces. So this is really asking us to harness some of those spiritual types of feelings that we may have or spiritual endeavors that we initiated say back uh, in April 
uh, for some of us may have gone into more the metaphysical and spiritual things with regards to that whole Jupiter conjunct Neptune, right? That happened essentially around mid uh, point of April, but continued throughout April and, and to some extent still carries on a little bit uh, into May too. We have Mars at this time also is going to be sextiling um, the north nodes of the um, that are actually in Taurus right now. And this will be occurring at the time of the total eclipse that we have happening on the 15th of May. So when we've got something like this configuration of Mars, which is energy, providing opportunities to this whole new destiny path for ourselves, it's something to pay attention to. Now this eclipse that I'm going to be talking about in a few minutes occurs on the 15th of May. It is a full moon total eclipse. And I did a whole video on this. So in my video that I did, I go into a lot more details. I go into all the sun signs and the ascendants. I'll put the link down below here if you would like to actually review that video as well. I will cover it too in a little bit of detail here. Um, and I will also cover this as well as the new moon in Gemini towards the end for each of the ascendants and or the sun signs. Um, but we've got all timestamps in the video as well as below in the text box for those that want to go directly to certain things um, and bypass my intro. Your choice. So let's get back to this total eclipse that's a full moon. Again, it's on the 15th of May. It's at 9.15 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time and it's at 25 degrees of Scorpio, 18 minutes. So we know that Scorpio, you're being highlighted here, um, and then certainly those folks that maybe have an ascendant around this time too. Um, both the Sun and the Moon are going to be squaring up with Saturn, and Saturn is in Aquarius at this time. The Moon will trine both Mars as well as Neptune, both of whom are in the sign of um, Pisces. And that is at about 24 degrees actually. And that was of interest to me too, because I thought, wow, well that 24 degree mark is very close to the degree point in mid um, April, where we actually had that once in a lifetime conjunction of Jupiter and Neptune together, right? So this brings in um, kind of like an um, favorable opportunities for folks that maybe started something or made some decisions in April with regards to either a dream coming true, reaching for dreams, um, putting wishes into effect, or just exploring the spiritual side of their lives, um, or maybe some even enjoying some miracles. This can just add more favorable energy and action, right, when we talk about Mars here. Um, so that's something to look forward to at this eclipse. We have Mercury that is retrograde, as I spoke about earlier, and it will be sextiling uh, Jupiter, which is, as I said, just into Aries right now, right? And so this to me says that there could be some opportunities with the retrograde Mercury and then the Jupiter here sort of illuminating things or making things bigger. Um, some misunderstandings could get blown up a little bit here. Um, and certainly because now Jupiter has, has ingressed into Aries, it's going to have a few people that are going to be self-righteous and saying, we're going to do this my way or not, and maybe communicating those things uh, to different folks too. It's also classically could be gaslighting, could be going on big time at this uh, full moon eclipse too with this influence of uh, Mercury retrograde sextiling Jupiter. Now I did do a video um, of the Jupiter going into Aries as well. I'll put that link below too and I do go into all the sun signs and ascendants in that video as well. So lots for those folks uh, to look at that would like to read and see more. So Jupiter is going to be staying in Aries uh, and going up to eight degrees of Aries in 2022 before it'll retrograde back into the latter degrees um, of Pisces. And that's going to be really towards the, the end of this year, around mid-October 2022, where it'll take that dip back into um, Pisces again. 
So we're still on this total eclipse in Scorpio and we have a wide sextile with the moon to Pluto and so this I thought was a, a wonderful opportunity for those folks that want to transform at least their emotional side and I'm thinking more specifically of Scorpio and then the opposite sign of Taurus. There may be some real opportunities here at this eclipse that may come out of the blue to totally transform your life. Um, so stay open and aware but this is an effect for all of us it just happens to be um, that the moon which of course uh, is in Scorpio is most affected. We have a Venus that is in Aries as I mentioned and it's going to be conjuncting the wounded healer of Chiron. So Venus in this standing here or this transit and conjunction with Chiron is really saying I would like to make things sweet, nicer for you, um, more, um, more from the sense of a bomb in terms of B-A-L-M that I want to stop this wounding that you might have and, and help you heal a bit. And the way this may come in though may be unusual. It may be that it comes through as an individuated thing. So this says to me there may be individuals decide to do it their own way with regards to healing. And this can apply to a general sense uh, where people decide how to heal themselves of the virus, but it can also be specific for individuals with regards to those that do need to heal. Venus provides a positive beneficial energy. It's viewed as the lesser benefit. Uh, but it still does actually give you benefits. It just means with the Aries part that it's more individualized, that you want to seek something out on your own. All right, so that's the total eclipse. Um, the next thing that we have happening this month will be a new moon in Gemini. And that's going to be on the 30th of May at 4.31 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And this is going to be at 9 degrees of Gemini, 3 minutes. And of course, like all new moons, we have the moon and the sun together in a sign, and it is in Gemini. Other things that we have happening at this new moon is we have Mars conjunct to uh, Jupiter in Aries. And so this just gives a lot of new starts. It just is big new starts with a nice favorable dose of energy from Jupiter. If you want to do something on your own and take your own path or pioneer something at this time and you want the energy to do it, I would say this new moon potentially, except for a few other things which I'm going to cover in a minute, could be an impetus to do that. Now we have Mercury which is the ruler of Gemini. It is also the ruler of Virgo too but it's specifically uh, more of a ruler in my view of Gemini and of course it's still retrograde but it's retrograde at 26 degrees of Taurus. So here we've got Mercury retrograde now going retrograde out of Gemini back into Taurus and by doing that it's actually now forming a square with rule maker, karma manifester, Saturn which is of course is in Aquarius. So this kind of puts a little bit of a, a, a fly in the ointment type thing with regards to really getting those newness things started. And uh, because Gemini does really relate to socializing for sure, it also says, you know, let's collect all the facts and all the information. Um, it says that, and it also refers to any kind of messaging or communication. I would say that the caveat with this new start in Gemini is that you, you may have to pay attention to um, supervisors. That's also something that uh, Saturn rules. It also rules the rules. So you may have to pay attention to the rules here and fall into line for those, new, those people that do want to have new starts here. Just check out any rules or regulations that are around this new start that you want to have and make sure that you're following whatever they are or check in with those people um, that make the rules or reinforce the rules. Not a time to actually um, 
ignore rules and regulations, I guess is what I'm really saying. Yeah, so when Mercury does go direct, it will be in Gemini, just for those that are interested. I'll cover this in my June video, but it will go direct uh, at nine degrees of Gemini on the 23rd of June, those that want to um, make note of that on their own calendars. So this may be a time when the noon newness of this new moon really manifests when the Mercury that's retrograde at this new moon goes direct. But there may even be a second delay or maybe a rethink or a reconsideration as a result of Mars going retrograde in October. Now I will cover this in more detail later on, but I wanted to mention it here because it all ties into this new moon in Gemini. And it doesn't mean this is going to be a negative thing for those folks, especially Geminis uh, and maybe Sagittarians that are starting something new. It just means that I'm giving you the heads up that there may be delays, there may be reconsiderations that you decide you want to undertake in October that goes back to this new moon that happens on the 30th of May. So I guess I'm saying allow for potential for that um, in anything that you're starting new. Now this Mars retrograde won't go direct till the 12th of January, 2023. And it goes direct at eight degrees of Gemini. And why is that important? Well, it's important because eight degrees of Gemini is very close to this new moon on the 30th of May, which is at nine degrees of Gemini. So there's a big tie in <laughs> of this Gemini new moon uh, right the way through uh, January, 2023. So I would plan for potential, um, not necessarily bad blocks or full stops. I would just say that follow rules and regulation, check in with superiors um, and plan when you're doing your plan for this new thing that you're doing, plan for potential um, delays, plan for rewriting, say something that you're doing involves writing, plan for uh, reconsidering contracts, for instance, that sort of thing. All right, Venus is going to now be in Taurus. And of course, Venus uh, rules Taurus. So Venus loves to be in Taurus. Um, Venus will not conjunct um, Uranus until the 12th of June, but I'm giving you a heads up on that one too. So this is exciting new romance for some. It can be breakups for other people. Um, it can also be money coming in and money going out as well. Um, I'll cover that more in my June video. This is just giving you a heads up of this Venus and Taurus conjuncting Uranus, uh, but it's not going to be till June. So I want to say a happy new year uh, to all those Geminis and Gemini rising at this new moon in Gemini. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to all those folks that kindly not only um, sent me some money for my dog, Sasha, uh, but also really uh, inquired about her on a regular basis and really uh, reached out to me. I really appreciate all your concern and all those folks that did send me some money to uh, get her surgery done. Uh, I want to confirm that I did get her surgery done and it was very successful. It was a few weeks ago and she's uh, back in full form eating properly and really I think has had uh, I would say a complete recovery. Sasha is 13 years old uh, and we know that's fairly old if you compare it to uh, human time. Uh, we'll see a little picture of her here. So this is a current picture uh, as of April 2022. And again, I just want to give uh, many, many thanks to everyone who supported Sasha. Thank you. I also want to give a shout out to a few people that have birthdays, but the birthdays are in April. <laughs> I'm a little bit tardy in my happy birthday wishes, uh, but they're two very important people. Uh, one of them is my sister, Marianne. She has her birthday in April when I'm making this video, but she's having it right around that very rare once in a life conjunction of Jupiter and Neptune. So I'm sending her lots of blessings and maybe she's going to have some great inspiration come in for her. Uh, maybe some magic and miracles. Happy birthday. I also want to say happy birthday uh, later on in April to my client and friend Marcy. 
Um, I'm wishing you happy birthday wishes. Take care of yourself, Marcy. All right, next I'm going to be moving on to the individual signs and or ascendants uh, for each of you. As always, I am very happy to do your chart. If you would like that done, please contact me um, via my website and then send me an email with your birth date details. But all that information is below should you want that done and I would be happy to be communicating back and forth with you. Libra. Libra, this full moon total eclipse in Scorpio happens in your second house of earned income. Well, this is going to either eclipse out a source of income that you rely on and then bring something else in, or you're just going to make the decision to start a whole new job where you earn your money. That's a big, big decision for you to make at this time. We have going on, of course, at this time, we have the Mercury retrograde going on. It'll still be going on with the new moon at the end of the month. So I thought that if this was, say, a new, a new thing that you wanted to do in the job that you're doing where you earn your income, um, it may have you deciding to say, especially say if you're in your own business, that you renegotiate some of your contact tracks with the Mercury retrograde. You decide to go back and say, you know what, I need to earn more money here. And this isn't working for me. I need to renegotiate some of these contracts so that they work better for me and bring in more money for me. That could happen at this full moon total eclipse too. But for some Librans, this could be you deciding that you don't like the way you're being valued right now. And it could go one of two ways. It could have you saying, I've had enough of being devalued and I want that to change. And you take concrete steps in order to do that. Now with the Mercury retrograde, it could have you going back on, well, how am I communicating here? Maybe what I'm communicating or even what I'm thinking or what I'm writing needs to be changed. And this eclipse brings in some opportunities, maybe some advisor or teacher uh, can come in for you to facilitate a better way to communicate. Um, but it could also have, as, as I said, for those people who've got their own business, have them renegotiation, renegotiating some contracts. And I'm just thinking intuitively here, maybe you need to bring in an expert like a, um, uh, an advisor or a lawyer that can look over some of your contracts and get them shaped up maybe into something more amenable to you making more money here. At its core, this is going to have you wanting to be valued more, whether it's valued through you wanting more money or you being valued for being a more valuable person. That people just don't undervalue who you are. It just could be a big change point for you where things happen to shift those in your view and you make changes as a result of it. Mm -hmm. Now the new moon in Gemini at the end of the month is going to be in your ninth house. We still have this Mercury retrograde ongoing though. So I would say uh, for those Librans that have decided that I'm going to do a lot more traveling here. Now the interesting playoff here is this. Gemini where the new moon is really refers to, you know, short term travel like in your neighborhood or around your city. Whereas the ninth house, which is ruled by Sagittarius, really refers to long-term travel of some sort. Uh, it can be overseas travel. Foreign connections are usually associated with this. So I guess um, you could decide to do both. Um, or this new moon brings in a lot more um, traveling within your neighborhood or within your city, but that you also decide to plan for a bigger trip overseas. Um, that could happen here too. Again though, there could be two things going on. The Gemini new moon could have you deciding just to take up some simple certifications, but maybe that simple certifications that you get are first degree. You're doing that to leverage the ninth house, which is where the new moon takes place of higher education. So whatever courses that you get with the new moon that you decide to take could leverage you to get the higher education with the ninth house. 
So one may play off the other and you may be making decisions at this time to do that. The ninth house is also the law. And because Gemini is all about communications, collecting the facts, um, socializing, um, data, it might mean that for whatever reason, maybe you're involved in some kind of legal case that you're given the opportunity to put together some new facts for your legal case that is very beneficial for you. Um, and with the Mercury retrograde, that may be some stuff that you forgot or data that you forgot or information that you forgot. You say, wow, I got to go back and find that, whatever it is, um, piece of paper, letter, information that'll help support this legal case of yours. For other Librans, this could have you publishing your writing, right? So Gemini's writing and the ninth house is publishing. So it's a direct hit of publishing. So congratulations to those Librans who actually will have something published at this new moon uh, in Gemini. But just a caveat here, <laughs> you may decide, even though you're given the opportunity, Libra, to publish your writing, that you're going to hold off because you're not quite happy with the Mercury retrograde. You say, I want to rewrite this. Or your editor comes back and say, hold the presses. We have to actually rewrite this. And it might not be till um, Mars goes direct, which is going to be January next year, that you can pull the trigger, right? That you can take action on finalizing what is going to be published. So just be aware of that for those Librans that are on the verge of doing any kind of publishing, um, either data or their writing. All right, I want to say I wish everybody a wonderful May. And um, I look forward to hearing from everybody in their comments. I, I really enjoy hearing from everybody. And there's a lot more people communicating with me. As I mentioned earlier, I'd love to do your chart. Everything is below in terms of what you need to do. Um, we've got coming up in June a few things. I mentioned that we've got a, um, a Venus that's going to be going into Taurus conjuncting um, Uranus. I would say that's going to be one of the bigger things that's going to be happening in June. Exciting new romance for some people. Other people will have some breakups. Um, I'll talk about that more in my June video. Please take care of yourself. Take care of all the people that you love around you. I'm sending everybody a lot of positive energy and we'll talk to you soon.